Well, first of all, thank you very much indeed for taking the time to come and talk to us today. Very much appreciated. Well, it's a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Now, your lecture was yesterday, wasn't yes. it? Tell us a little bit about some of the things you were talking about. So, I talked about uh, different projects I've worked on in which um, mathematics and math image analysis in particular uh, have helped art conservators and art uh, uh, historians understand better or uh, make uh, some of the artwork uh, more vi visual, uh, explain it visually to museum goers or, or, or art historians. Uh, Tell us, give us an insight into some of the projects you've worked on. Well, uh, one project was a study by Van Gogh that he painted in his Paris period. It was a, it was a study of some uh, grass in bloom. And below that, as, as it's quite common with Van Gogh in many of his studies, about 30% of them have uh, uh, something else painted underneath. And usually that's another study that he felt taught him what he needed to know, and then he put another layer of primer and painted something on top. But that one uh, was particularly intriguing to uh, art historians because underneath was a portrait of a peasant that came from his Noonan period, so before he went to Paris, and he lived with his parents, and he painted lots of, of uh, uh, portraits of peasants in very low light conditions inside their very dark little houses. And he was trying to render an impression of color with a very dark palette. And we have a letter that survives, like the whole correspondence between Vincent and Theo van Gogh, his brother, where he says, I'm sending you here to Paris, a picture in which, one example in which I believe I succeeded particularly well. And we have that letter and not the painting. And so it was believed the painting in Paris after he met the Impressionists and completely changed his style and probably didn't value this painting so much anymore that that's the one over which he painted the other study. And so they were very interested in getting more information. And people had used uh, X-ray fluorescence, which is now, 10 years later, a technique that's used quite a lot and, and so on, but then was very, very new, and material scientists had proposed this. And they had gotten information locally about the pigments underneath, and they wanted, with that information, to get a better reconstruction. They had colorized it a bit, but they said, maybe with image analysis you can do more, and we could do a lot more. So that was one project. But, uh, and how did you get involved in this type of work? Well, it's really thanks to somebody called Rick Johnson, who is an electrical engineer at Cornell, and who had always been interested in art. And just a few years prior to this Van Gogh study, uh, he was in, in, in Europe and uh, got to know the conservators at the Van Gogh Museum and was impressed by how much science they used. And he said, but you don't use image analysis. And they said, no, why would we? We are highly trained visual experts, and they are. They see things that I would, I mean, they need to point me to it for me to see them. Um, but he said, you know, image analysis is much more than seeing with great acuity. It can bring things out. And so he organized a workshop where we were allowed to work on high resolution data of Van Gogh paintings, and we showed them what could be done. And every time we, sh I talk about these results, I try to give talks to art historians and art conservators. They can come up with problems, I mean, and so the one about the underlying, under the painting underneath uh, the, the study of grass is something that happened because I gave a talk about right. earlier results. And so by meeting more people, they say we have this problem, that problem, and so more problems come out of the woodwork, uh, sometimes literally, because we paint, we work with paintings on panel, on wood panel, and, and uh, so uh, it's been very interesting, a lot of fun. Fascinating work, isn't it? Yeah, I like it. I, I bet. It also shows, doesn't it, the, the importance of mathematicians working closely with people from a variety of different disciplines. I, I, I agree completely. And I actually, uh, some of my students, some of my students prefer to stay in the purely, purely mathematical world, and that's fine. And some of them are interested in these collaborations. I also collaborate with teams of biologists and, and geophysicists and so on. And I always point out that it's very important to really work at the collaboration angle because uh, it's good to stay in contact with the people who bring you the project. It, you can't just listen to them and distill a problem and go away and solve it. Because if you do that, then most of the time when you meet with them again, they said, oh, but that's not really what the problem was. We forgot to tell you this. And they didn't 
they weren't mean in forgetting. They just didn't tell you what everybody in their world learned in kindergarten, but you went to a different kindergarten, and so you didn't know about that. And uh, so the collaboration is important to keep it sustained, and that also brings you more interesting problems. And, but you have to find people because it takes time, and so people from both worlds have to be willing to put in the time to do this. Uh, well, thank you very much indeed for taking the time to talk to us today. Well, we really very appreciate welcome. it. Thank you. Thank you. ICM TV is brought to you from the 2018 International Congress of Mathematicians in Brazil. So for more like this, click on some of these great videos and don't forget to subscribe for more from the best in science, from everything from mathematics to physics, geophysics and engineering.